Praise the Lord. Shall we rise up as we pray together? Our God in heaven, we thank you once again. What a good God you are. What a great Father you are. You know what's ahead? And you don't want us to be taken by surprise. That's the reason you brought us together in this retreat. So we can sing through and so we can praise through and so we can plunge ourselves into the river of your mercy and your favor. And so that your fire, your power, the anointing and also the breaking of every yoke will take place in every life. Lord, we pray at this time again, reveal yourself very clearly to every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, we know we are not the first set of people you are revealing yourself to. You revealed yourself to people of old. And a lot of them benefited from that revelation. Some of them did not benefit. And these things are written for learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. We are praying, Lord, you make us wise. And this time of your favor and mercy, we pray, Lord, we receive everything you have for us in Jesus' name. Make us strong. Make us wise. Make us bold and courageous in the day of evil. That we will be able to stand and nothing will defeat us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We know you are going to give us all the power we need for this present hour. Do it for us, Lord. We receive by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We have come to consider a message from the Word of God that looks very peculiar. And the Lord wants to reveal to us what we need to know for the present hour and for the future ahead of us. We are talking about escape from the power and influence of Sodom. That word escape, it means there is danger, peril, difficulty, a time that will catch everybody unawares. And yet the Lord has prepared a way, a way of escape. That word escape. We find in many parts of scripture. Let me point a few of them to you. One, as the Lord himself used that word, escape. We're looking at Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The Lord is saying, a time is coming, a time of peril, a time of danger, a time of judgment, a time of punishment for the world. And he's saying, we need to watch. And we need to pray so that we will be accounted worthy to escape what's coming upon the people of the world. Then he's telling us in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Again, we're looking at the word escape. It's going to take something from you. It's going to demand something from you so that you will escape and you'll not be caught in the trial, tribulation, and in the trouble coming upon the people of the world because it will come upon them unprepared, come upon them unawares. But the Lord is saying, We will 
escape. We're going to escape in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect? How shall we escape if we neglect? He's sending messages to us through his servants, many of us, through his prophets, many of us, and through his appointed, anointed preachers, many of us. And then he's saying, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. First generation believers are always very vigilant, they're watchful. Those who just came to the gospel at the first time, at the beginning of the church, the early church, always watchful. But the people that come second generation, third generation, first generation, they are mostly careless. When you think about the church, the early church, the church of the Acts of the Apostles, you find that devotion to the world, and you find that devotion to all the instructions, the commandments of the Lord, taking heed. But after you come second generation and third generation and the fourth generation, then religion takes over from righteousness. And then the people are no more careful, are no more watchful, are no more serious about preparation for the coming of the Lord. That's what you'll find here. The people at the time that Paul wrote to the Hebrews, this is not the first generation. You have now second generation, third generation. And he's saying, how shall we escape? So great, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first, that is the first generation of Christians, they heard it, they knew it, they embraced it. At the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and it was confirmed unto us by them. This is another generation now, by them that heard him. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. I'm sure you know that many of us who are here now are the retreat. You are not the first generation of believers in our church deep alive. You came much later. And the vigilance of the early days, maybe you don't have. The watchfulness of the early days, maybe you don't have. The passion of the early days, maybe you don't have. And the seriousness of taking heed to the word of God, maybe you don't have. That's why the Lord is saying, second generation believers, third generation believers, fourth generation believers, understand we are nearer the end than at the beginning. And so he says, how will you escape if you neglect so great salvation? We're not going to neglect. I said we're not going to neglect. That has come, you understand, the Lord is preparing you and preparing us all together for the coming of the Lord so that we will escape what is coming upon this world. We're talking about escaping from the power of Sodom. The influence of Sodom. And let's look at the reason we're saying that. We're now back in Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. Genesis chapter 13, verse 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Talking about Sodom, the power of the sinful world, the authority of the sinful world, the influence of the sinful world. 
the men of Sodom were wicked. Not only wicked, they were sinners in the sight of the Lord. And it says, exceedingly. And the Lord is telling us that we're living in the world, and the world in which we live in is like Sodom, sinful, wicked. And you know, there's a word that came out of that name of the city, Sodom, Sodomites. Sodomites, those are men with men, messing up together. A lady and another lady messing up together. It started in Sodom. And if you have been listening to what is going on in the world in which we live today, Sodomy. Sodomites are even now appearing. They're not just sneaking into some churches. They're now even asking for ordination to become preachers and ministers. And in some countries right now, you will be penalized by the government if you spoke directly against Sodomites. Men and men getting married together, adopting children, and saying that they are married and they want you to recognize the marriage. The marriage of a man and another man. The marriage of a woman another, and another woman. They want you to give that public recognition. Not only that, they want you to be able to also give them employment. No discrimination. They have a right. We have these last days coming upon us. And it's telling us that we need to escape the power and the influence of Sodom. Let's look at Jeremiah. You're not going away from Genesis. And then you see that the influence and the power, the corruption, and the evil and the sinfulness of Sodom even continued beyond the time of Genesis. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, we're looking at verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery, prophets, preachers, so-called servants of God, and they walk in lies, destroying them also. The hands of evil doers that none does return from his wickedness, they are all of them unto me. Tell me the next thing there. As Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. It's talking about the prophets, the preachers, the priests, the ministers in the church. And he's saying, they are unto me like Sodom and like Gomorrah. What do they do? They strengthen the hands of evil doers. The influence of Sodom. The influence of Gomorrah. And it's saying, the people that sin and the people that do evil instead of the prophets of God rising up and condemning the sin and then speaking with a fiery voice and message against evil. It says, destroying the, the hands of evil doers. And then it says, those prophets some priests and pastors and preachers, they become like unto me, the people of Sodom. Look at verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. That's the influence of Sodom. 
And we're praying that this church, the Palife Bible Church, in every country, in Africa, in Europe, in America, Latin America, Asia, everywhere, we as a church together will escape the power and influence of Sodom in Jesus' name. I told you that because we're second, third, fourth, perhaps, generation of believers, the kind of attitude we had against sin, against evil, against wickedness, against corruption in the earlier days, we're praying as a church, we'll have that same fiery attitude against sin, we'll have it back in the church in Jesus' name. So that you don't have a favorite that is committing sin and backsliding, committing adultery and fornication and doing evil and then supporting them. It's my man. It's from my tribe. It's from my village. It's my relative. It's a person close to me. Don't touch him. Let him corrupt the church. Let him cause people to backslide. Let him bring in all the influences of Sodom. It's my man. It's my lady. Leave him. Leave her. That is the influence of Sodom. And we're praying that from tonight and permanently in our church, the Lord will purge out all the influence of Sodom in the church in Jesus' name. We're now looking at Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. I'm reading from verse 45. Escape from the power and the influence of Sodom. Jeremiah chapter 51. We're looking at verse 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her. And deliver ye every man a soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. He's saying that the Lord is commanding us, challenging us. That the influence of Sodom is so near. And you know, we are around many other churches. And many of us, we even have some members of other churches living in your house. And even your community and your share notes to share ideas together. And they tell you this is what they do in their church. And this is how they operate in their church. And this is how they act in their church. And this is what they permit in their church. Their the church is so loving and they're all in fellowship. And they hear about what we do over here. And they hear about our stand against evil and against sin. And the way we want all the people associated with this church, not just workers, members. And the moment you come in here and then you hear the word of God, we're expecting everyone associated with this church to stand straight and to come out from among them. And then when you compare notes, they say, uh -uh. they do that in your church. And they're so militant in your church. Oh yes, to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Oh, they say, well, you know, in our own church, a pastor, what can he do? Once in a while, he preaches and says, stand straight and stand firm. And when the people don't, uh, you know, do it, you will say, God bless you. In any case, whatever you do, whether you are good or bad or sinful or righteous, I'm a pastor, I'm just going to love you. I'm going to have a place in my heart for every sin that you do. But no, here is different. We are seeing first generation believers keep the fire burning and keep the fervency and keep the challenge you had and the conviction you had in the earlier days. If possible, you even want to become more fiery than you were when you came in. And then the second generation, third generation, fourth generation believers, they are just coming to the church. And the Lord is saying, there should be unity of conviction. And you see at my back here, it says, earnestly contend for the faith. 
once delivered unto the saints. You might have to just, you know, brush some people aside. You might have to discipline some people. You might have to check some people. Don't do that. You can't go that direction. You might have to frown at some people. Whatever we have to do to make sure that this church does not get infiltrated, influenced by the power and attitude of Sodom, we're going to do it in Jesus' name. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to be in agreement with the leadership of the church in Jesus' name. You know, that's what is keeping this church from the influence of Sodom. As state overseers, as fiery as the general superintendent, our region overseers, as uncompromising as the general superintendent, our group coordinators here at the headquarters and our coordinators over here, our leaders over here, our sectional leaders over here, as firm and as fierce and as savage and as focused as the general superintendent. And I pray that that firmness and focus will remain forever with us in this church in Jesus' name. And of course, I'm sure you know coordinators who are here, group coordinators who are here. I'm sure you are not waiting for me anymore. Gone are the days when somebody commits sin and somebody does something that is not all right. And we say, we're waiting for the pastor. You're not waiting for the pastor anymore. What you know I would have done, do it in your district, in your group. Something takes place. That the influence of Sodom is coming into your local church. And that the corruption of the world is coming into your local church. You are a coordinator there. You are the pastor there. And you are the group coordinator. You are the pastor there. And you see that if the general superintendent were here, he will not allow this. Then deal with it. Don't wait for me. Don't say, I'm going to wait when the GS comes back from his trip. Then he will handle this. No, I've transferred the authority to your hand. Handle that. And the coordinator is a pastor of that church. And you are over every section of the church. The men, the women, the youths, the children, the choir, the orchestra, the ushers, the security in that local church, they are under the leadership of the pastor in that church. And if anything goes wrong, and the influence of Sodom is trying to come into that local church from any direction, don't say, if it were GS, this is what you will do. I've shown you the example. What I would have done, that's what you do. Even if you have to make some group of people sit back and sit down and say, hey, come on. This is Sodom. This is the influence of the world coming in here. And if the GS were here, this is what you will do. Do it and you have my support and back it. We're together. I said we're together. It's going to be like that in Jesus' name. The same thing with our region of overseers, state of overseers, and national overseers. I will be telling you, you know what I do over here when I see that the influence of Sodom is coming in. I take it over myself and I say, no, this is the way walk ye therein. And God will help every one of us to stand by that word in Jesus' name. Are we together? I said, are we together? Of course, of course, of course, we have to be together because we are on our way to heaven. And that place, heaven, we are going to get there in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. I'm looking at verse 8. Revelation chapter 11. We're looking at verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You know, he was crucified in, in Jerusalem, but now even Jerusalem became like Sodom. And then we're told in Revelation here, 
that even to the to that time that you find this city just like Sodom. If that could happen, we're coming from Genesis, and the influence and the power of Sodom began in Genesis. It went on to the time of Jeremiah, went on to the New Testament, and went on unto the time of the Revelation. That's why the Lord is telling us that we need to find out if the power, the sinfulness, the attitude, the corruption of Sodom is coming into the church. This day is going to be pushed out of our church in Jesus' name. Escape from the power and escape from the influence of Sodom. I'm going to talk on three points. Number one, the description of the sinfulness of Sodom. The description of the sinfulness of Sodom. Number two, the danger of sins in Sodom. And Sodom in saints. The danger of saints in Sodom and Sodom in saints. Number three, the deliverance of saints from Sodom. Number one, the description of the sinfulness of Sodom. We're looking at Genesis chapter 13 again. Genesis chapter 13. Let's see the description of the word of God. Concerning Sodom, the description of the sinfulness of Sodom. Genesis 13, reading from verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves one the one from the other. Abraham, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. He didn't go to Sodom immediately. He just preached and near. Separating from the man of God, from the friend of God, from Abraham. And then he preached his tent near Sodom. And then he says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Let's look at chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 20. Genesis chapter 18 verse 20. We're told, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. You think about what the Lord is saying, what the Lord said about Sodom. He said, their cry is great. The crime is terrible. And their sin is very grievous in the sight of the Lord. Verse 21, I will go down now. And see whether they have done all together according to the cry of each, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Look at verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou, will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? And then the Lord said that it goes on in verse twenty six. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom how many righteous people? Tell me out loud. 50 righteous within the city, I will spare all the place for their sakes. The Lord said, Abraham, I'm listening to you. You're making intercession. If I see 50 righteous people there in Sodom, I'll be patient for them. I'll wait for them. I'll wait for those 50 to influence them, turn them around. He continued praying and then we're told in verse, now we're now in verse 32. Look at verse 32. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, 
and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. But you know the Lord was not able to find ten righteous people in Sodom. And the righteous people we're even talking about, we're not talking about, uh, you know, people who are, you know, saved soundly and then righteous and holy and sanctified. We're talking about people like Lord. And you know the righteousness of Lord. The righteousness of Lord was the minimal level of righteousness. And that's the kind of righteousness the Lord was even saying, if I find ten people, minimally righteous like Lord, minimally righteous like his daughters, minimally righteous like his wife. If I find ten in that place, I will spare them. Even with that minimum level of righteousness, God could not find ten people there that had minimal righteousness. That makes you to know then the description of the sinfulness of Sodom. Let's look at Genesis chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 4. Genesis chapter 19 verse 4. How sinful Sodom was. How terrible Sodom was. The kind of crime they had. Chapter 19 verse 4. But before they lay down the men of the city, even the men of Sodom compassed the house round both old and young and all the people from every quarter. And he called unto Lord, and he said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. The word know there is not to want to know their names, no more than that. Want to see their faces, no more than that. They wanted to know them as a husband knows the wife. You see, and Adam knew his wife Eve. That means they came together. And that's what they wanted to do here. We want to know them. We want to have something with them. We want to defile them. And then it says in verse 6, And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And then, and he said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. You understand now when he said, I want to know them. If it's just to see their face, that's not wickedness. If it's just to know their names, that's not wickedness. If it's to know, from which country are you? What are you doing here? You want to settle here? You want to trade here? You need accommodation here? You need land here? Let's know you. Let's know who you are before we give you land. That's not wickedness. It's the sinfulness. Of sodomy is the sinfulness of man and man walking that which is so seemly defiling their own bodies. That's why Lord said, Do not do so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and you do unto them as it is good in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing. You know what they were asking for then? They wanted to have immorality. And he said, okay, if you want immorality, look at the man who was saying he's righteous. Look at this man, he says, well, he said, number one sin is too terrible, but number two sin can be is less. Uh, sodomy is terrible, but my daughters are here. They don't know any man. Can I give them to you? That's a smaller sin. That's a lighter sin. That's the righteous man we're talking about here. That even the people could not be as righteous as that. He permitted little, little sins. He permitted the less serious sin because to him, defiling his daughters, they would not be as terrible as defiling the men. And then it says, For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Verse 9. And he said, Stand back. And he said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. You came to live here and they will need to be the judge. He wanted to be a leader. Already this Lord was getting into the politics of the land. And he wanted to be a judge in Sodom. Can you think about that righteous man? 
that we even said as minimum righteousness he wanted to be a judge a ruler over the people and these were people he could not influence he could not change and then he says they said he wants to be a judge now will we deal worse with thee than even with them and they pressed so upon the man even lord and came near to break the door look at this but the men that means the angels put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness the angels performed great miracle and made all those men of Sodom blind but look at it after that blindness was small and great so that they wearied themselves to find the door after they were stricken blind they still wanted to commit the sin seriously and they were looking for the door where is the door where is the door they knew that they were blind and yet they could not find the door and they wearied themselves in wanting to find the door that shows you then how sinful they were and the lord will deliver us from this kind of lifestyle in jesus name give me a good amen, amen. but you know brothers and sisters sin comes in little by little by little you open the door a little and then sin was sticking one leg and then sticking the second leg before you know what the whole scene is there and this is what happened to lord he pitched his tent near sodom later he went into sodom later he mixed with the people later he wanted to be a judge over the people and later he mixed with them he became almost part of them and when you allow sin in any form sin in any shape a little a little a little before you know what the spirit of sodom and the power of sodom and the attitude of sodom and the lifestyle of sodom will creep in and then stay inside i pray that god from tonight will purge this church from the influence of Sodom in Jesus name let's look at first Kings chapter 14 verse 24 first Kings chapter 14 what well, reading from verse 24 remember now we're coming all the way from Genesis and now we're going far and we're talking about hundreds of years thousands of years now after Genesis we're looking at first Kings chapter 14 verse 24 it says and there were also Sodomites in the land. And there were also Sodomites in the land. Can you imagine that after the judgment came? That influence of, Sodo, of Sodomy, of Sodom, it remained. And that corruption of Sodom still remained. That's why we're saying, although we have left them in Genesis, and God had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, yet the crime yet the sin yet the evil yet the corruption of sodom was still there verse 24 and but there were also sodomites in the land and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the lord cast out before the children of israel you see way way off away far away in first kings it was still there we're looking at isaiah chapter one Isaiah chapter 1 that attitude of Sodom remained in the land of Israel the influence was terrible of Sodom Isaiah chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 2 in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 hear O heavens and give ear O earth for the Lord has spoken I have nourished and brought up children and they have rebelled against me the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's creep but israel does not know my people does not consider a sinful nation a people laden with iniquity a seed of evil doers children that are corruptors they are forsaking the lord they have provoked the holy one of israel unto anger they are gone away backward why should you be stricken anymore you will revolt more and more the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint 
from the sole of the foot even unto the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and fortifying sores they have not been closed neither bound up neither mollified with ointment your country is desolate your cities are burnt with fire your land strangers devour it in your presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers the daughters of zion is left the daughter of zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard and as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers and as a besieged city except the lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant we should have been as as what tell me out loud as sodom and we should have been like unto gomorrah you see what uh, the lord is warning us of brothers and sisters would you look up a moment you know a church like this you know what do you know what uh, people do in the world when there's a strong army over here and another army over here not as strong a army a very strong army b very weak but the weak wants to swallow up the strong and this is strategy that you know uh, military people didn't know this they will send people from the army that is weak they will send them to infiltrate the army that is strong and then they'll mix with them and become part of them and they will you know go in and out of them and they carry arms with them and they say they are fighting the weak army but really they are spies the weak army sent them into the strong army to infiltrate to be part of them and then they'll be telling the secret of the strong army they'll be telling it to the weak army they'll say this is the plan this is the goal this is what they're doing this is their strength this is what their leader is doing then the weak army they, they don't have the, the strength to fight they'll be insinuating influencing their members that they sent into the strong army do this do this and cause confusion in the midst of that strong army and in the six they never saw before they begin to see that that's the enemy plan and eventually as they are fighting themselves the weak army will take over destroy them you know the devil is a strategist when this deep alive came up and the lord brought us up as a light a beacon of light in the nation to go everywhere and preach the gospel to every creature and then some other churches they begin to learn what do they do how do they do house fellowship how do they do evangelism what's their strength why are they so united why are they so one together in oneness and nothing is able to break their ranks and why you see that you know their leader wants to say go they go once he says come they come what is the secret and they want to be larger than deeper life stronger than deeper life they want to swallow up deeper life you know what they have done just like the army a and b that i told you about go into their midst number one go and get married to their ladies and get married to their men and whatever condition they give you just accept if they say if you're going to marry us you must come into our church just say yes i will come after the marriage then you know you will not show your true color and say hey come on this is not my church i just got married to you i'm going back to my church if you want the marriage to remain come on follow me that's one area another area is that everything we're planning everything we're doing before we even finish tonight they know it in that other church how do they know that how did they see all this they have their people that are planted there planted in the choir and planted among the people there planted among the people there and they know how our retreat had been a kind of retreat very strong very forceful very effective and how do you destabilize their preachers 
How do you destabilize their leader, their general? The way you destabilize him, do this and do this and do this. And while the real deeper life people are kind of submissive and obedient and yielded and looking at the word of God and writing notes and kneeling when we pray and standing when we pray and with all their heart, oh Lord, make me strong. All those people that were planted there to infiltrate, they're doing all their gimmicks and everything and then they're causing confusion. And you are thinking that they are our members and it is to bring Sodom into the church. I will say we're going to purge out all the Sodomites in Jesus' name. And you don't you don't know the techniques of the devil. You know sometimes there is a sodomite there. There is a sodomite, a sodomite, a sodomite there. Not really part of us, but dressing like us for a purpose, acting like us for a purpose, saying yes, we believe the same doctrine like you do for a purpose. And then when they do something that they are told to do, they were taught to do. And they were planted there to do. And then we say, Hey, come on, you cannot do that. Then you are defending them. You don't know they are not part of us. And you are thinking because they are part of us, how is the pastor acting like that to them? How is the pastor not, pastor not gentle with them? We're not going to be gentle with sodomites. I said we're not going to be gentle with sodomites. We'll make this place so hot for sodomites. And before we detect them, they will run away by themselves in Jesus' name. But here is where you need to be wise. If you claim to be a member of this church, if you are a real bona fide member and you got saved by our ministry, me and other preachers are preaching to you. If you are part of us, if you are a real son, a real daughter, when we are correcting all those things and the sodomites are trying to kind of bring up their own attitude, you are the one to stand by your pastor. You are the one to stand by your general superintendent and say, all those people who are planted there to destroy the foundation of this church, we are going to get rid of them together. You will agree with me, I will agree with you. If you are a real daughter of mine, who taught you to fight me? If you are a real son of mine, who taught you to fight me? What are you fighting about? Did I offend you? Isn't the same way I've been preaching since 1973? I'm still preaching today. What offends you? What offends you is because all those sodomites, they have gotten so near to you and so friendly with you. And anytime we try to preach and push them out, then you are defending them. Now today, you're not going to defend any Sodomite anymore. Me, your father in the Lord, if you're going to defend anybody at all, who are you to defend? Of course, it's your pastor. Your pastor, your general superintendent. And anybody telling you, how did he talk like that? Say, what do you mean? Shut up. Our children are taught to respect their fathers. And if you are going to say anything, you respect your father in the Lord. When he rebukes you, when he chastises, when he corrects, when he's trying to punch out all those sodomites, will be united one together, honestly contending for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints, we're going to do it in Jesus' name. Even when the correction affects you, because unknownly to you, you have already imbibed the influence of Sodom. And then while we're purging them, we're cleansing you. And that cleansing will go all around everybody in Jesus' name. The men and the women, the boys and the girls, every member of this church, apart from all those spies, all those spies, they will go away in Jesus' name. And after they are gone, don't worry about them when they go. So the pastor see, see our retreat. We want to increase. I want to bring people in. And the preaching of our pastor draws so and so away. Let them go, those are the Sodomites. They don't want to change. And they go like that, say, praise the Lord. The place was so far for them. They could not stay. They will not stay in our midst in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. All these Sodomites, they came into the midst of the people of Israel. They corrupted Israel. They influenced Israel. And they brought Israel, the whole nation, under judgment. And the influence of Sodom that is coming into this church 
the Lord is going to drive them out of this church in Jesus' name. I, I don't remember the time we ever argued with one another in the 70s and the 80s. When I say stand, we stand. When I say siege, we siege. When I say go, we go. When I say come, we come. When I say evangelize, we evangelize. When I say we're not singing now, all we're doing is this, what we're doing. We just do it. We're all united. It's only in recent years as all these uh, people infiltrated that we're having argument. We're having kind of division. And somebody is saying, he said that. I don't agree. Those are the strangers. I pray God will send them away from here. Ezekiel chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 46. Ezekiel chapter 16. We're looking at verse 46. It says, Thine elder sister is Samaria. And she and her daughters that dwell at thy left hand, and thy younger sister that dwelleth at thy right hand is who? Sodo and has and her daughters. See, the Lord was talking to Israel here. He said it in Genesis, he said it in the Kings, he said it in Isaiah, he said it now again in Ezekiel, and he says, Your younger sister is Sodom. Yet as thou not walked after their ways, not done after their abominations, but as if that were a very little sin, thou was corrupted more than they in all thy ways. They even became more corrupt than the Sodomites. And it says, As I live, says the Lord God, Sodom, thy sister, has not done, and she. And no, her daughters, as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters, behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. That's the description of the sinfulness of Sodom. And the Lord is telling us to escape all that influence of Sodom from our means from tonight. You will escape. I said, You will escape. And all the corrupting influence of Sodom in our midst, the Lord will cleanse and purge and take away in Jesus' name. All the unbelievers, carnal people, unconverted people that have joined the workforce, joined our ushers, and joined the security, and joined the choir, all the unconverted people. The Lord will spot them out. Push them out. So that when they, they will have a clean, pure, united choir, a clean, pure, united ushers, the people that have the mind to serve the Lord, and then the service of the people of God, so pure, without any stain, and without any influence, or sodomize, will be given unto us, and then this church we we'll go to the very height of revival in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number two, the danger of saints in Sodom. And the danger of Sodom in saints. There are two parts there. Number one, saints in Sodom. Come back to Genesis chapter 13. Saints in Sodom. In Genesis chapter 13, the latter part of verse 12. Genesis chapter 13, latter part of verse 12. And pitched his tent towards Sodom. Verse 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That's uh, a saint getting into Sodom. Chapter 19, verse 1. Chapter 19, we're reading from verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening and lord sat in the gate of sodom nearer now than it was before saints coming into sodom then looking at their lives seeing their music seeing their attitude seeing their food seeing their dressing and seeing their comportment and seeing their character and seeing their lifestyle it was now sitting at the gate verse 9 it says they said stand back and he said again, this one fellow came in 
to sojourn and he will needs to be a judge in our world even to be a political leader in Sodom says getting into Sodom we're looking at second Peter chapter 2 in second Peter chapter 2 I'm reading there from verse 6 second Peter chapter 2 verse 6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just Lord vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked it's talking about Lord his saint in Sodom that he was troubled but he never left he remained there he was unhappy he never left he remained there even when the armies came he confesses he came and they took him away and took his wife away and took everybody away abraham went and defeated those enemies and delivered lord and lord did not wake up to say what am i doing here why am i in the midst of sodom see what has happened to me he went thank you abraham for helping me and getting me out of that captivity of those people that took me captive I can't thank you very much bye bye and he went back to that same Sodom there was something in him that will not leave Sodom is there not something that is happening here today there are people that love the Lord they love the Bible they love this retreat and they love every good thing going on here and yet there is somebody having a negative influence on your life and the fellow is you know all the time will preach the word of God will go back there and say well do you accept everything are you going to just sit down like that are you going to accept all those things they are saying the influence of Sodom around you and even though it's a trouble to you even though it traumatizes you even though you are saying why am I so hooked up with this person why am I so near this person and yet you cannot leave saints in Sodom I pray God will deliver us today in Jesus name and then it says in verse 8 for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deeds he was troubled in his heart vexation trouble in his heart unrest no peace in his heart and yet he never left he remained there are you in a situation like that you are living somewhere you have any friend a sodomite friend and your heart means uh, all that he's doing, all he's asking for, you're not happy. You have come to the retreat. And then you hear the word of God. And you make up your mind, I'm going to live a righteous life. I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do. Then immediately after the retreat, that fellow will come. Welcome. I came to the house, the, you know, after uh, on a Friday, Saturday. I couldn't find you. Where did you go? Well, you know, now I'm deep alive. Now, okay, I remember now. Well, what did you go for? We went for, you know, now every December and every uh, April, Easter time, we go, for, oh, yes, I remember. One, retreat, retreat. You retreated. You went away. You ran away. Well, welcome. And I just want to tell you that, you know, I'm demanding this and that. And then it troubles your heart. And to say no, you cannot. To say, I've made up my mind, you cannot. And to say, I'm on my way to heaven now. No more compromise and no more sin. You cannot. Your soul is vexed. Your soul is troubled. And you don't like the intimacy and attachment with this individual because every good thing you want to do is the one that is bringing you down and you cannot say no you will say no this time you will take your stand he will be angry of course he will frown of course he'll he'll pour out some unprintable words against you of course with all his anger you'll say this time child of satan influence of sodom corrupter i've made up my mind this decision that i've taken now i have power for the present hour i will stand you will stand in jesus name 
Who knows your stand might bring conviction upon him and upon her. If he really loves you, if she really loves you, she'll say, I'm sorry for wanting to bring you down. Can you bring me up? Instead of him bringing you down, you'll bring him up. You'll bring her up in Jesus' name. But you know, in the case of Lord, it was just very, he couldn't change them. He couldn't transform them. Couldn't even preach unto them, but was just staying there, saints in Sodom. Not only that, Sodom in saints. It's not just that they were in Sodom. The influence of Sodom came inside them. The lifestyle of Sodom came inside them. And I want to challenge you today. And I'm serious about this now. You need to check up the influence of Sodom inside you you are a saint of god a child of god and yet the character of sodom the attitude of sodom the rebellion of sodom the forcefulness will have our way if we have to break the door we'll break the door and enter and defile those men even when you're disciplined and you're blindfolded you're still scrambling for the door that we will still do what we want to do. That's Sodom. Sodom is saints. That's what the Lord is saying. He wants to purge that Sodomite attitude. Wants to purge it away from our heart. It will be done in Jesus' name. Let's look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. In Genesis chapter 19, we're told in verse 17. Let's look at what they were told. Genesis chapter 19. We're looking at verse 17 there. It says in verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that they said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Look not behind thee. Verse 26. And his wife looked back from behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. You know what? Sodom was inside her. She came out of Sodom by force. The angels laid hands on them. Come out of Sodom. And then while they were going, it was still inside her. Are we living like that? All the fashion of Sodom? All the friends in Sodom? All the influence of Sodom, all the parties of Sodom, all the entertainment of Sodom, all the dancing in Sodom. I will leave everything like that. Where are we going? Who are the people living? I will live in the known for the unknown. Where are we going? And then she looked back and became a pillar of salt because Sodom was inside her. Look at verse 30. And Lot went up out of Zoar. And dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoam, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Hey. Wait, not a man in all the earth, daughters. Do you remember Abraham? Do you remember Isaac? Do you remember that Abraham, Isaac was not yet born, that Abraham had servants, 314. What are you saying? There is not a man in all the earth to come in unto us. The only men they knew. The only men they recognized were the men of Sodom. And all those men of Sodom, they have been burnt up. And you see, there was Sodom inside them. See, you see the Sodom inside them, Versace to come. Let us make our father drink wine. Where did they learn that? A Sodom. Attitude of Sodom. Influence of Sodom. Sodom was inside them. They came out of Sodom. And yet, that attitude and that action and that lifestyle of Sodom was still inside. And we will live, we will lie with him. 
that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. I thought, Lord, you said these said, daughters have never known any man. How did they know how to do this when you were unconscious? And then the first one became pregnant. The second one became pregnant. You know what? When Lord saw the pregnancy of the firstborn and the secondborn and saw that they were pregnant by lying with him, he never said anything, never rebuked them, just took care of them. Isn't that Sodom inside the man? Isn't that Sodom inside those two daughters? That's a danger. As we allow those Sodomites to get near, eventually they get inside us. That they begin to play their trick. And they begin to have their influence. And I pray that that influence will be totally destroyed from our lives in Jesus' name. You know the last days in which we are living? These last days will be like the time of Noah and the time of Lord. Let's look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 and the lord is warning us that these days perilous days painful days traumatic days and sinful times that the lord will give us the power the power to be sharp-sighted and to recognize this is sodom that is sodom and that influence of sodom will not affect me will not affect you will not affect us will not affect our church in jesus name Give me a good, good amen. amen. Help me wake up those who are sleeping with your amen. amen. Luke chapter 17 now. Luke chapter 17, I'm reading to you from verse 28. Why don't you go to verse 28? Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day, that Lot went out of Sodom. He trained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Very near the time of the rapture, the time of the second coming, the world will be like Sodom. And we we'll see it already. You see the corruption already. What happened in Sodom that is not happening in our country? What happened in Sodom that is not happening in our continent Africa? What happened in Sodom that is not happening in the West? What happened in Sodom that is not happening all over the world today? The Lord is about to come. That's why the Lord is saying, if we're going to flee out of Sodom, this is the time. And we're going to flee out of Sodom. Sodom will not influence your life. Will not influence your children will not influence your family. Sodom will not influence your husband. Sodom will not influence any local church in deeper life. And Sodom will not influence this church as the old denomination. The Lord will keep this church preserved from the power and the influence of Sodom until the very end in Jesus' name. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, look up here. You know something? And we know it happens in a little family. In a little family, the wife is saying, now my husband is too much work, scrubbing the ground, cleaning the ground, and then going to the market, and then cooking this and cooking that. You know, it's too much for me. Uh, can I have a maid? And then, you know, the husband says, we're happy together the way we are. You and I and our children and this uh, uh, family have been very much preserved from the influence outside. And then the wife keeps on talking. You know, we need this. We need, okay, you know, go and get well, whoever you want. And eventually, that woman, the wife, will go and get a maid. And that maid, and I'm telling you, the maid very serviceable and is very dutiful and is very loyal and is very obedient and is very respectful, hardworking. But the only thing, she belongs to the other world. Well, she serves and she does everything. And then before you come from the office, the ground is very clean. Everything is well arranged. This is good and that is good. But she belongs to the other world. And then she begins to put that spirit in your children. 
And then your children will say, Mommy, something happened. In the night today, myself and, you know, Auntie so and so, we went somewhere, we ate something. They didn't cook it, we just ate it, and it's sweet. You say, What? Where did you go? And then we went like this, like this. At what time? Mommy, ask her where he she took us to. And then, come on here. What did you take my children to in the night? What did they say? What, where did they say I went? I don't know anything. And then all the children, they're totally influenced. And then the business of the father, that he is of the father of those children, already going down. And then husband and wife, that never had argument before. They begin to argue. What is this? What is this? Ah, it's me you are talking to like that. When did this kind of speak come upon you? Now, if, you, if you're not careful, if you are treating me, I will go. And, and it is that mage. Eventually, one day they discover that it is this mage that is bringing all that kind of spirit. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to drive her away. If we drive her away, how about all this service, all this labor? All these good goods. Can we ever find another lady, another mage like this that is so useful like this? And because of what that lady is doing in the family, we just leave the evil spirits there. It can happen to a church like that. That some people come into the church so useful, so dedicated, so active. Before you make announcement, they are there already. And before you call for this, they are there already. But with all the usefulness, all the skill, all the ability, there's another spirit that is working against the progress of the church. And then when we discover it, was, what are we going to do? Nobody like them. They're so useful. And they're so dutiful. And they're so committed. And they're so consecrated. What are we going to do? Well, you keep their services and lose the church. Just like those people, they're going to keep the mage and they lose the family. That's why the Lord is calling us to wisdom and saying, whatever usefulness anybody has, whatever ability anybody has, once we discover it's an agent of Sodom, wanting to corrupt not just a little part of the church, the whole church, we're going to say thank you very much for your skill. Thank you very much for your ability. Thank you very much for your consecration. But this is not helping our church. And then we're going to purge all that away in Jesus' name. It may good amen. I'm not going to be the one that will do it. You will be the one that will do it when you discover that all around you. And you children, when you discover a mage in your family. Don't wait for daddy or mommy to discover. When you have discovered, tell mommy, tell daddy that this made you brought in, gave us this food and gave us this food. And since we ate that food, this is, we're flying, flying here and there. Tell mommy and tell daddy so that they will be able to get rid of that spirit from that family. And if it happens to a little family like that, it happens to a large family a church like this, we'll deal with it in Jesus' name deliverance of saints from Sodom. Deliverance of saints from Sodom. We're looking at Genesis chapter 19 verse 15. Genesis chapter 19. We're looking at verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed with the iniquity of Sodom. That's what the Lord is telling us tonight. Escape. Escape. Are we going to escape? 
to the mountain top. Don't stay in the valley. Don't stay in, you know, so so Christianity, managing the Christian life, managing just with the doctrine. Well, I try my best. No, escape to the mountain, the mountain top of righteousness, and get away from all that Sodom and from all the influence, from all the power, from all the corruption of Sodom. Tonight is that night for you and for me, for us together as a church to make up our mind. Are you ready? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, we're going to escape. Escape to the mountain. Don't stay in any other plane. Any friend you have who is a sodomite, any friend you have who has a corrupting influence upon your life, you're telling the Lord, you're saying, Lord, tonight I make up my mind. I come into the full salvation of the Lord. I said, stand up. Let's stand up quickly. Let's stand up quickly. Don't be a sodomite. Don't be a stranger in the midst of the people of God. Let's stand up and open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. I lay myself, everything I've got on the altar, and I'm going to come out of that influence of Sodom. Don't allow your friendship with anybody to make you stay in Sodom. A corrupting influence, a sinful influence, a criminal influence, teaching you against your salvation, teaching you against the way of righteousness. You tell the Lord, I know holiness is important, indispensable. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Anybody that will take that holiness away from you, a man, a woman, a so-called friend, a stranger, a so-called member of the church, a spy, an infiltrator, a so-called worker that will take your fervency away and take your commitment away and take your conviction away and do it little by little, little by little, weakening your conviction, watering down your conviction diluting your conviction making you now to find fault with the word of god anyone anybody no matter how close how near that will make you to ridicule the word of god to throw away the convictions that were built over many years you can do without anybody apart from Jesus. Nobody on this earth should be so important to you that you'll take your salvation away, take your conviction away, take your very eternal life away, take heaven away from you. Then you say, you know, they're so nice and they're so good and because they're so useful, so profitable, and they give us progress, and they are so wonderful that they take eternal life away from you. How wise will that be? Escape! Escape for your life. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Anybody speaking to you after tonight? I'm telling you, don't mind them. That's the person you will not mind. That's a stranger. He has a strange spirit. She has a strange spirit. Anything, anyone that will bring us back to the beach where we came from will give up that thing, give up that individual. Come out of Sodom. Escape. Escape. Don't allow the power of Sodom to pin you down. The influence of Sodom to tie you down. Get rid of it. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Then I will receive you, and ye shall be my sons and my